Thank you guys for being here tonight. This is our, this is our fourth night. And we have one more night tomorrow night, 7 o'clock. And then, and then, of course, we have church Sunday. So I encourage you to get to your, your campuses that you attend on Sunday. But then the, um, what will happen with Heaven Come Services, folks, for the rest of the summer, what will happen is um, starting next week, we'll, we'll meet every Wednesday night through August 21st, okay? So we went Sunday through Thursday this week. So this is Wednesday night. Tomorrow's Thursday night. That's our last night this week. And then starting next week, it'll be every Wednesday. Say every Wednesday. Uh, 7 o'clock, okay? And, of course, children's ministry and all that's available. Everybody say Sunday. That's still a good day to worship the Lord, all right? So <laughs> I know we're here tonight, but we are going to be having church on Sunday. And as I was thinking about our, our time together tonight and, and I, I, what I feel like I, it was on my heart to share with us you know as we were singing and as we were worshiping th- there's something about these songs that the worship team leads us in that uh, allow us to magnify and exalt the Lord it allows the strength of God it really focuses our attention on the majesty of Jesus on the light of God versus the darkness that we deal with all the time. Uh, matter of fact, in John chapter 1, verse 4 and 5, I know you guys, many are familiar with this. Oh, thank you. All right, now I can see. <laughs> I'm glad because I was, I was faking it. So, um, in his, so here's what it says in John chapter 1. It says, in him was life being Jesus, and the life was the light of men, and the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not comprehend it. And one translation says the darkness could not conquer it, the light of God. In Jude chapter 1, the writer says this. He says, I want to remind you, and I remind you of the angels who did not stay within the limits of of authority that God gave them. He's talking about the angels that became the demonic forces before, you know, during the fall of Satan as, as he fell from heaven. And, but it says God gave them, uh, God gave them and left them a place where they belonged or they left the place where they belonged and God kept them securely chained. There's a part I want us to, to hear tonight. God has kept them securely chained in prisons of darkness waiting for the great day of judgment. So, the place that God assigned Satan and the angels that he deceived, the place that he assigned to them was a place of darkness. Satan is the God of darkness, little g, but he's the God of darkness. And when we talk about darkness, we're not just talking about the absence of light. We're talking about a moral darkness. It's, the, it's not the absence of light that creates this type of darkness that we're talking about and that I'm talking about right now. It's the absence of God that creates that. So here's the point. Any area that we withhold from the Lord in our lives becomes a resting place for Satan. It becomes an area of darkness. We give him liberty. Even as Christians, if we withhold any area from God, and and if there's an area that we're withholding from his lordship and his kingship and his sovereignty and his majesty, if it's an area that's unsurrendered, folks, that, that's an area of darkness, and we give, this, we give Satan liberty to feast on that part of our lives and destroy us. Matter of fact, I'll say it this way. The areas of darkness that we, that we uh, hide today, today become the same place of our, of our defeat tomorrow. Again, in him was life, and that light, life was the light of all men. Colossians chapter 1, verse 13 says, He's delivered us from the powers of what, everybody? Darkness. He's delivered us from the power of darkness, and he's translated us into the kingdom of the Son in whom he loves. 
We have been delivered from that. But even as Christians, being delivered from the authority of darkness, we can still walk around and have pockets of darkness within our own lives, areas that are unsurrendered to God. And all I'm saying is that Satan is the God of darkness. His realm is darkness. His realm, that's where he lives, that's where he moves, that's where he roams. And any area that we leave dark is an area where he roams. He becomes the God of that area, not God of the universe. Does that make sense, everybody? This is probably why some of us are struggling with certain areas of our lives and we're not experiencing the victory that we want to and need to experience because it's still an area that's unsurrendered. We're trying to manage it or navigate it or work it out and we're, we're, we're with the strength of willpower. We're white knuckling it through that area of our lives and losing every time. Why? Because it's darkness. It's an area where Satan abides. But light drives darkness out. The light of God, the light of truth, the light of salvation, the light of the one that we've been singing about drives out the darkness, and the darkness has no counter to that. The darkness cannot overcome it. Here's a passage of Scripture that the Lord gave me when all of this started happening last summer in Isaiah 60. It says, For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth, and deep darkness over the people. But, but the Lord will arise over you. And his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall come to your light, light, and the kings of the and the kings to the brightness of your rising. Lift up your eyes all around and see. They all gather together, they come to you. Your sons will come from afar, and your daughters will be nursed at your side. Then you will see and become radiant. Your heart will swell with joy because of the abundance of the sea shall be turned to you, and the wealth of the Gentiles shall come to you. What I'm saying is, is if there's an area in our lives of darkness right now, some of you know what that is. Some of you know what that means for you. It's, it's different areas probably for different folks. and Probably a lot of us, it's maybe even the same areas. It could be bitterness. It could be unforgiveness. It could be hatred. It could be lust. It could be fear. Folks, it could be pride could be pride. And and that's dangerous because the scriptures tell us that God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. Jesus said this, when your enemy is accusing you, your adversary, agree with him quickly along the way. What was Jesus saying? When When Satan comes to accuse you, he was saying, don't defend your pride Agree with him. Yeah, I am prideful. Yeah, I do have a problem with my temper. Yeah, I do struggle with lust. Are you getting this? You understand what I'm saying? We agree with our adversary quickly. Yeah, you're right. I am selfish. I do have a problem with being self-centered. What happens at that point? Man, we are humbling ourselves before God. We're resisting. We're submitting ourselves to God, and we're resisting the devil at that point. The, the enemy, can't, he has absolutely nothing. There's nothing he can do when we humble ourselves before God. God, I'm, I'm wrong. I was wrong. I repent. I, I'm, I need you to forgive me. I receive your forgiveness. I'm not going to defend myself. I'm not going to allow that inner, inner attorney, right? I'm not going to let him loose to try to defend me when I know good and well a part of what I'm being accused of is probably right. There's probably a little bit of pride there, and there's certainly an area that I've kept in the darkness, and I need the light of God. I'm telling you, folks, tonight is the perfect opportunity to surrender any area in your life that you've been withholding from God. Because I'm telling you, you can only do that for so long. That area will ultimately be your future defeat. That is exactly the area in which he will defeat you. And now it's secret, but when that happens, it'll be open. I'd rather, between me and Jesus, surrender those things to him now then have those things, then experience that horrible defeat and have them exposed out there in front of everybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying, everybody? You know what I mean? 
And as we continue to worship in these next few moments, and as we respond to the Lord, I want to I want to I want to encourage us to just be honest before God tonight, and, and let's let that be that type of evening for us. Let let's let that be that that type of that type of moment for us. And and I know there's a lot of folks that are watching the Facebook live stream. I, I'm I'm talking to you right now. God's not limited. He's right there in your living room, or he's right there in your office, or wherever it is you're watching this. I'm saying to all of us, guys, listen. Please, I beseech you by the mercies of God. I beseech you by the mercies of God to be a living sacrifice before God. Surrender everything to him. This is your reasonable and acceptable worship to God. Stop withholding those areas of your life. I'm telling you, stop worrying about what people are thinking or what it's going to look like. I'm telling you, let Jesus set you. Let's take that stuff out of the darkness, guys, right? And let's bring it out into the light of his glory and his grace and his redemption and his freedom and his healing and his mercy and his victory. Let's let his victory sweep over that area of darkness. Let's let the light of God just flood our lives. May we become radiant all the way through. No pockets of darkness can I get a witness. Come on, tell me. I'm telling you, man. We, We gotta do this. I'd like for us to stand to our feet if we could, and as we're standing, and as the worship team begins to lead us, if you may want to go to the communion tables. You may need to. You may need to pass through these waters tonight. We last night we heard some incredible testimonies of people being physically healed as they as they were being baptized. And and uh, he may be asking you that for you the step. Now listen, for you the step might be to be baptized tonight. For you, the step might be to make your way to a communion table. It might be to kneel right right where you're at. For some of you, you need to walk out and walk down these aisles and come down front and say, God, I want to give you every area of darkness. I want to give you that thing that I've kind of hidden, that thing that I've withheld from you. I'm giving to you tonight. Some of you may need to come down and just stand here or kneel here, and that's the response that the Lord's asking from you. How many would agree with me that obedience is is the safest place to be? Right? So I'm asking you to obey God right now as the worship team begins to lead us. And let's bring to Him any area that we have withheld from Him. And let's find that victory that He has for us. Can we do that, everybody? Let's worship Him now. Yeah, so many are already responding. Come on, let's worship Him together.